welcome to my podcast on real relationships. My name is Sophie Basson and I am a relationship expert, international speaker and best-selling author of a book, You Have a Half. I decided to start this podcast because, in my opinion, relationships are currently not being portrayed as what they really are. Whether you're watching the news or social media, the perception given to people is wrong. And my aim is to talk about what happens in the real world, talk about real stories, and listen to what real people think, do, or go through, as opposed to creating expectations of something that doesn't actually exist. I may not agree with everything that is said by my guests, but it is their chance to express their opinions and their stories. And here today we have Tatiana Bertelsen, and we are going to talk about polyamorous relationships. Hi, Tatiana. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. It's a really <laughs> fascinating subject. So tell us, because I'm sure some people won't know what polyamory actually is. Um, so... Quite broadly, I'd say um, it is creating multiple mm, romantic relationships, whereas an open relationship is more you've got one romantic partner, but uh, multiple sexual partners on the side. Um, now, under that umbrella, there's like so many different ways of doing polyamory. So the way that I do it might not be the way that other people do it. Um, and I think there's a lot of misconception about what it is as well. And and, you know, people who aren't too familiar with it, they will have certain ideas that don't always match up to the truth, which include my own friends and family, you know, as well. Um, so and that's why I'm always open to questions. Okay. Tell us about your journey in terms of relationships. You know, how old were you when you had your first boyfriend? And how did you come to discover that actually multiple romantic relationships was better for you? Um, well, I mean... I was a normal teenager in the sense that, you know, I've kissed a few boys when I was younger and, you know, had a few, we call them relationships, but um, whatever they are when you're a teenager. Um, but I grew up in a monogamous environment um, and I'm originally from Denmark. You know, I lived in the countryside um, and I'd never really heard of polyamory, um, not even open relationships, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, I moved to London just about 10 years ago um, and I've been on quite a personal journey here mm -hmm. sort of discovering myself and listening more to myself and and looking into what do the thoughts I'm having actually mean um, and it was about six years Challenging ago beliefs to a degree sorry challenging your own beliefs well yeah I mean just actually becoming more in tune with myself um and realizing that, oh, I don't actually have to live um, by the rules that were set out from where I came from. Um, even if you're there, living there now in the countryside in Denmark and countryside in the UK, you know, you can create your own rules. Um, so about six years ago, it sort of dawned on me that I don't believe in being with one person, just one person for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't believe in you know, constantly breaking up and, and, and being unfaithful and anything like that, because I've never been unfaithful to a partner. Mm -hmm. um, however, at that time, I met someone. And before I could sort of say anything, he said he was looking for a monogamous relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like head over heels for this guy. He was absolutely amazing. And I thought, well, I've always been monogamous. Um, and that's what most people do. So, you know, I went for it. <clears throat> and I think it sort of just became clear at one point that it wasn't the right thing for me. He was still absolutely amazing. Um, but I think we both knew that the way we were, the way we had constructed our relationship wasn't right for either of us. Um, so about two years later, that all sort of ended, which was like four years ago. And I decided, okay, I'm on my own now, but it's time to start living the way that I feel is right for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I began to sort of, I started dating again, and I was very open with people that I dated, saying that this is how, you know, I want to live my life. Just um, have interest. What is the reaction when you say that? Um, sure. Well, it really depends on what, the, no, it depends on what they're looking for. Um, 
because obviously in the beginning when I started dating, I dated more casually because I wasn't really ready for a relationship, but I was still being very vocal about, about it with them saying, look, if this does continue into something more, this is how I want to live my life. Some of them were monogamous and then obviously things ended when they found a partner and became monogamous. Um, but um, most people just are very intrigued by it, even though most also don't want to live that way. Yeah. Um, but then obviously nowadays it's, it's something I'm very open about. Um, and, you know, when I date and I write online profiles, it's, it's very clear in my profile that, that I am polyamorous um, looking for real emotional relationships, but more than one, you know, um, why is it, it doesn't that mean that you think that one's not enough, so to speak? We have this idea that the person that we're with, like monogamous people, that we keep looking for the perfect person, mm -hmm. you know, and that is an immense amount of pressure to put on someone. And imagine like the pressure on yourself as well, that you have to be perfect for that person. Um, and, you know, it works for some people. That's great. But divorce rates are still like 50%, you know, because you can't keep that up um and and also i i i i think i actually discovered quite early on that i had the ability to be romantically um in in love with more than one person at a time because i remember when i was like 11 or so 12 years old um i would get crushes on boys in school obviously um the and more then than Sorry? But more than one. Yeah, because then suddenly I, you know, I was still liking one boy and then I started liking another one. And I was like telling myself, no, this is wrong. You need to stop liking the other one first because you're not allowed to have feelings for more than one person. This is not how it works. Um, and I struggled a lot with that back then. Um, Which is interesting, isn't it? How it's now looking back that you realize that actually it's not a new thing or a recent thing. It started at an early age an early age even. Yeah, I mean, it's been sort of an aha moment for me later on to discover that because, I mean, I think most people, they have a lot of love in them to give. It's just, how do you give that love? Um, and when I really fall for someone, I fall quite intensely and I can fall intensely for multiple people at the same time. And I think for them as well, it's quite nice to have it a bit spread out. So they don't have to have all of it on them because maybe that's a bit much, I don't know. Um, but it's also the fact that, you know, doing it this way means I get to date different kinds of people. You know, I don't take, I don't tend to... Um, they're not all the same them. type. They've got different... No, no, they're yeah, not. I mean, speak. my friends tend to say, well, they're all good looking. And I would say, obviously, yes, um, I have very good taste. But, um, but personality wise they're all quite different um because like i said to someone i like pizza i don't want to eat pizza every day um and i get different things from them and i can be a different me because i'm 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 not just one type of person you know i have different sides to me and different things i like to do and not everyone likes to do the same things so and do you think that maybe the reason what people find it difficult is that obviously it's not what society says but maybe also a sense of insecurity that you know what if she doesn't want me anymore because i'm sharing her with somebody um do you think that is an element of insecurity but are monogamous people not insecure as well no that's what i mean that's what i mean yeah yeah i think well <laughs> so that's another thing um i found is that a lot of people say to me oh so you don't get jealous and I'm like well, hey whoa I get jealous all the time um but I deal with it you mm. know um obviously in my head I want to be my partner's um primary thought I want to be the number one in their mind um but I'm just not always gonna be mm -hmm. um and I need to deal with that and also whenever I, I do get jealous I sort of take a step back um so at one point I was seeing three, three different people at the same time. Um, and when I would get jealous, I would take a step back and go, oh, okay, well, I mean, you feel differently about these three, but you like them all equally as well. You know, it's not like 
it takes away. You don't have a favorite, so to speak. No, and it doesn't take away from another that I feel something for the other person. And it's just, um, yeah, there's just. Fair enough. And has he ever caused problems? You mentioned that family, friends don't always understand it, but sometimes also even within the relationships. So as far as family and friends go, um, when I started dating polyamorously about four years ago, some of my friends knew, um, but I, I wasn't completely open to everyone about it until just over a year ago when I decided that, okay, you know what? I'm just going to make it public because I want to find people that can be a part of my life. And, you know, there might be photos on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And I don't want people to think that I'm just out there hooking up left, right and center and, and cheating on people or whatever. So I, I made a public post about this is who I am. This is how I felt. This is what I've done. Um, and I just received nothing but understanding and love from everyone, which was, really overwhelming because I was really nervous um Imagine. and I thought I had this idea that I was going to lose some people in my life because that's what you think you can never imagine who it's going to be but um but statistically you just think that some people are gonna you know go but um no one did mm. um within the relationships themselves um that I've, I've had to deal with jealousy, but not between the partners themselves. Okay. Actually. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure it'll come up at some point. <laughs> what do you mean not between the partners themselves? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't jealousy in between my partners. Um, you know, they were all quite happy with, with how things were. Um, so I haven't had that experience yet. I'm sure that at some point I will. Um, but I also do think that if you experience jealousy or insecurity, there are some other things you need to look at. Um, because I had, I had one partner who, um, we were having some problems, um, with communication and there were some things that weren't being said. And, um, and then I started to feel really insecure and I was like, why am I not being let in on these things? So when he at one point wanted to start seeing someone else, um, I tried to veto that. Okay. And it wasn't because of the person he wanted to see, because I didn't know that person. It was a friend of a friend and I've only heard lovely things about her, but it was all the other things in our relationship that just wasn't right. working out at the time. And I needed to work on that and feel secure before I was comfortable um, with a new person coming in as well. And, and what did you say? Um, <laughs> did that go away? <laughs> no, hmm. no, unfortunately not. It did not work out well. And I think a lot of polyamorous people will probably say that vetoing is a really bad idea. Um, and it's not generally something I would support either. Um, so, yeah, that did not work out. <laughs> it's an interesting one, though, because um, someone I know, a friend of mine, has an op open relationship. Now, as we said earlier, this is completely different because polyamorous is romantic relationships, where an open relationship is more about one romantic and multiple sexual partners. But either way, so... Um, they decided to do that. He, he's someone who doesn't want to ever get married. He's not interested in having kids. She's younger than him, but kind of like on the same train of thought. So they decided that being a white person didn't suit them either. So they said, as long as we can talk about everything and we're honest, it work. And to be fair to them, there were points where one or the other was struggling and we put a stop to the other people, shall we say, and focused on their own relationship, you know, being exclusive again, let's say for a year or two, and then started again. And whenever there's been an issue, we've been able to talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it works for some, and it, it just depends on what are your priorities at the moment. Um, my partner at the time was very honest and saying that he was thinking a lot with his... <clears throat> yeah at that time and his heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's call it that well yeah. his other brain um and and that that's one at that point so 
So some people, you know, being the devil's advocate here, would say that maybe it's just that you haven't found the right person, the one that, you know, is perfect within the imperfections, with the funny quirks and all the rest of it. <laughs> Do you think that you could ever, you know, if you met such a person, just be with one person? Or is it like, no, it's quite a set in stone now. I know who I am. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, just because I'm polyamorous, it doesn't mean I need to date multiple people all mm -hmm. the time. You know, I had a friend once say to me like, oh yeah, well you need to date three all the time. And I'm like, no, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. You know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm single. Um, I am dating again, you know, I've done socially distance dating during lockdown, which has been really weird. But, um, but yeah, you know, I do believe that I am polyamorous but it doesn't mean that there's always going to be more than one person. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And how do you find someone? Because, you know, people say always about um, how difficult it is to find someone online, let alone more than one. And then accepting that. <laughs> Again, that's a, that's something um, where a lot of people have misconceptions because people will say to me sometimes, oh, you must have sex all the time or, you know, must just be so nice to be able to go out and just find whoever you want. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. Because mm -hmm. um, like, first of all, not many people are polyamorous. Mm -hmm. And second of all, within that small pool, you then again have to find people that you connect with or have similar yeah, interests, like whatever. Well. Yeah, you know, um, so it's a very small dating pool. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, I think I'm maybe a little bit picky as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I do find it difficult to find people that I match with. Um, but then when I do, I just, wow, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but I mean, there are places online where you can, can go for polyamorous dating as well. Um, and I think just being honest from the very get go. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point in trying to date someone monogamous and going like maybe I can convince them because no, there's no point. That is just really <laughs> not it. it's like trying to change someone that won't work either. <laughs> yeah. Um. So going forward, like let's just say, okay, so there's two or three people in your life and you've been together for quite a while. Obviously, they've got other partners as well. And that's the whole just for me to understand here. But the whole living together kind of arrangement. How does that? start working out do you end up with a house with nine people in it or do you know what I mean? <laughs> you see everyone does it differently so it depends on what works for you and your partners um I could so what see would what you that. want if you had you know the choice obviously you would have to be decided with set people but <laughs> I could see myself one day living with one of my partners mm -hmm. um I quite like that you know I've lived with someone before and I enjoyed that feeling of, of, you know, we created our space together, woke up together in the mornings, had our routines. Um, but then having the freedom to, to also date other people. Um, yeah, and just have as much love in our lives as we possibly could. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I never know what's going to happen. Um, maybe I won't live with anyone. You know, I'm just going to take it as it, as it comes. Fair enough. And obviously we touched on this earlier, but communication is key, isn't it? As you said, from the beginning, but also throughout the relationship. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, I've always tried to be very honest with people that I date and also then, you know, meet someone new and I want to start seeing them seriously. Um, trying to bring that up and see how the other person feels about it. Um, because for me, I think that if I could sense that my partner was not quite comfortable with the situation of a new person, I might just back off of that a little bit and and, and make sure that what I already had going on was was stable enough to, yeah. to continue with something new. Do you sometimes feel the need to be reassured? Probably even more so or less so or the same? Or Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I do need to be reassured, but I think in the same way that anyone else would, even if you're monogamous. Um, but obviously, you know, if you, if you date multiple people, your time is split up between them. 
So, you know, I'm not expecting one person to give me all the reassurance I need for all three. You know, it, it's sort of like, yeah, the, stick to the ratio, you know. So if I'm seeing people, things are split sort of three ways. Or for some people, it's not split exactly three ways, you know, it can vary. Uh, would you say that there's a maximum amount of people? Well, I suppose there's only so many days in a week, but... <laughs> Um, Considering if you meet someone, even if there's three of them, um, you want to spend time with them because you have feelings for them. Yeah. Probably, I think there's three. probably a cap, so to speak. <laughs> I think three for me is probably the cap. Yeah. I know someone who's dated four and she did say that, yeah, that was a bit, bit too much um, trying to obviously think about everyone and, you know. And time for yourself. Yeah, and time for yourself as well. Um, I kind of viewed a little bit as having multiple long distance relationships, even though I live in the same city as people uh, as the other ones. Um, you know, because people who don't live close to each other, maybe they only see each other, you know, once every other week or maybe once a week if they're lucky. Um, and no one bats an eyelid at that, you know. Um, but I just have the same kind of setup just here in London. Fair enough. And in terms of, um, obviously, well, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway, uh, just in case, you know, someone didn't know <laughs> this. But how do you separate that fidelity from loyalty from cheating? Can you get a bit messy or is it, again, you know, straight down the middle, we have to talk about it before anything happens sort of thing? I mean, again, you you and your partners set the rules for what, you want is is a uh, is acceptable between the two of you and like i've had partners where i had one set of agreements with one and one set of agreements with another one because they they didn't have the same need for information mm -hmm. um so again communication you know um i mean if you have an agreement with your partner that you're allowed to go out and sleep with whoever you want even if you're just on a nightclub night with your girlfriends or whatever and you find someone and you want to hook up and that's not cheating because you agreed with your partner you're allowed to do that um so so yeah i can't really say what where the where the line goes fair enough fair enough and obviously you mentioned earlier right at the beginning how you know you moved over here and you um went through a bit of a personal journey of discovery and came to that conclusion. But would you say that since then, having polyamorous relationship has actually also helped you to grow as a person? Oh, yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Um, suddenly finding yourself in a situation where, so imagine a monogamous relationship, you know, <clears throat> you make plans with them, you know, you have to keep track of you know what what they're doing and when you can see each other or their birthday or any special dates you have together now i had to do that times three mm -hmm. um so i really had to learn how to multitask prioritize and yeah. multitask and uh, and yeah um it can be hard sometimes obviously to be there for more than one person if there's more than one person that's going through a tough time but um you just really need to make it work. And again, communication all the way through. And is it okay? I mean, do you all spend time together sometimes? Or is it really like defined? One person's got my time here and then this other one that day. And um, my previous partner didn't really have an interest in spending time with each other. They all knew about each other. Um, but I could see that happen at some point. You know, I know other polyamorous couples. Um, that work that way you know they can easily be together in the same room and hang out um so so yeah i think i'd be okay with that again it also depends on have you got any other issues going on of insecurity or jealousy that needs to be worked on first um yeah yeah so we're getting towards the end of our time although not quite just but because i want to explain a story and ask you to leave us with some sort of <laughs> words of wisdom shall we say <laughs> Um, recently a friend of mine approached me he, he um, is in a monogamous relationship and he said uh, he found out his girlfriend had slept with a female best friend 
and they both said that they wanted to enter the world of polyamorous relationships. The best friend needed to speak to her boyfriend, and she obviously spoke to him about it. And he was very, very unsure because he was like, well, I quite like her. Yeah, we've been together an amount of time, but I feel like I'm not enough. So I know that for you really started really early on that you kind of knew. But if someone's kind of sitting on the fence like this, not sure, am I on time? Do I want to explore it? Um, what would you say to them? I think you can, you can easily... Um evolve over time, like evolve your relationship style, just as for a lot of people, sexuality um, evolves over time. Um, again, just be open and honest about it. Um, I don't quite agree with the fact that your friend's girlfriend was sneaking around, but yeah. there could obviously maybe be some, some issues around insecurities of her sexuality. Did he know that she was bi? Yeah. Um, you know, um, I still don't obviously agree with cheating, but um, but yeah, I think you can definitely try it out. Um, always just say to any people that you're dating, if you're dating someone who's already poly polyamorous, just say, I'm new to this. I haven't done it before. Um, you know, can you can you talk me through it? And, you know, so I'd definitely say give it a go. Um, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah. And I guess it's quite different because obviously they were in a relationship, or they still are, for two years. And then this came up, for him anyway, out of the blue. Um, so as you say, you know, she may have had ideas, doubts, whatever, beforehand. But for him, it's a new thing. So it, it's quite different than entering a relationship with two different people are being set the rules from day one. Yeah, but I think they can still make it work if they want to. He, he's going to have to want to as well. Then, obviously. Then, yeah. Um, but maybe for now, it's just that he wants to try. Yeah. And then they can see where it goes from there. And, you know, he can still be monogamous if he's okay with her having a girlfriend on the side. It doesn't, just because she yeah, has I another partner, it doesn't mean that he needs to have one if he doesn't want to. Um, so he needs to figure out what he's comfortable with as well. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, thank you. That was really nice, you know, talking about something a bit different, really. And thank you for sharing your experience. You're welcome. I just probably just underline as well that this is my experience and that everyone experiences it in a different way and, you know, have, have different styles of polyamory. So there's going to be a lot of people out there who just don't do it the same way that I do at all. I'm sure. But it's still really interesting because sometimes people don't want to talk about this sort of stuff. Which is a shame, you know, but I guess, again, we go back towards the fear of judgment and needing reassuring and insecurities, isn't it? Because you've got to be, like, really confident in your own self to be able to talk about something like this. Yeah, I guess I guess that's true. I mean, I just realised back then, just over a year ago, that I need to be open about it because I want the love in my life um, in this way. Um and I want the people that I date to be a part of my life and be able to meet my family and my friends and without having to constantly explain what's going on. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Um, that's all we've got time for for today. And for everybody else, if you enjoyed the show, then please subscribe and leave us a review. But more importantly, come back for the next episode. Thank you. Bye.